Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I just want to say thank you so much for the support on my last video. Uh, you guys, comments, likes, subscriptions, all that just mean so much to me. So thank you so much for that. Um, if you haven't seen my last video, I'm going to link it in the description below. But I talked about the new way that I am organizing and storing my floss for cross stitching. So if you want to see that, um, go ahead and click the link in the description. But if not, we'll go ahead and get started. So today what I'm going to do is give a little overview of how I'm feeling about my cross stitch um, floss storage system and then do a little mini whip parade and show you what I'm working on right now. So first things first, let me show you. I showed this last video. This is the binder that I'm putting my floss in. So I do not have all of my floss in here yet. It's been slow go. Um, and not because it takes a long time, just because I don't have a lot of time to sit here and do it. But I have probably, I don't know, 20 colors in here already. And I have a few more that need to be added. So I do not keep a lot of floss on hand. I don't try to have all the DMC colors. I don't get into a lot of the over dyed floss. So it, that's not really my thing. I usually um, only buy floss for a project that I need. So that I don't have a lot. Now, if you had tons of floss, this would take a while to do, which might be the only downside that the switching over from another system might take you a little bit longer, but it really hasn't been that bad. So here is the binder when I open it up. Here's some colors here. And I also have these right here. So these are the rings that hold the binder together right here. And the colors are right here. The number for the color is on the bag. And then this opens up like a Ziploc. So whenever you want to use a color, you take it out, you use it, and then you put it back in here when you're done. So I do have um, a few colors left to do. These are the ones that are left right here. These have not been braided yet, but I am loving this system. Guys, this has been a game changer for my cross stitching. So these if you didn't see them this past time, these are the floss drops. They have the actual DMC label on them. So I never have to wonder what color this is. And then um, you just loop your floss here. And I braid mine as well, which you'll see in a second. And it keeps it from getting tangled up. So here is what's left to put into my binder. Just that this just needs to be braided and put into a bag. So a couple of things I want to show you today are some of my works in progress. And... Uh, my first one here, let me pull it out. This one is a cross that has some wildflowers around it. I got this from Etsy and I will pop the name up here, but it's from a shop on Etsy called Pursuit of Happy Stitches. And I'll, I'll show the, the um, that in just a second, but this here is a cross. I'm hoping this is gonna be a Christmas present. I started this in the spring and I'm a teacher and I teach agriculture, so we don't have summers off. So this went with me on all kinds of trips over the summer to conferences and camps, which is why you see when I have it on the hoop, I stitch maybe backwards from what some people do. Instead of having my fabric that lays across the top of my hoop, I put mine in the bottom. This is called stitching in the well. And if you put yours on top, it's called stitching on the drum. This way, when I'm working, my hands are not touching the front of my piece. So I'm really bad about just picking up my cross stitch uh, whenever and maybe not making sure there's nothing on my hands before so the oils that are on your skin can get onto your piece. And this just kind of prevents um, your hands from touching the, the working part of your piece. Really like this. So let me show you. This is what it will look like when it is finished. And I'll hold it back here because I don't want to show her pattern too much. But so this is it right here. You can see I'm about not even 50% done, but um, it's been hectic. So I haven't had too much time to work on it. But there is the name right there. It's Wildflower Cross Pursuit of Happy Stitches. And again, that I'll pop that on the screen as well. So I'm hoping to have this done by Christmas. I am stitching it on 14 count Ada. This is the largest piece I've ever worked on. Um, and before I understood how to cut cross stitch fabric to size, I cut this one a little bit small. So I may end up having to um, tweak the pattern slightly to make it fit because as you can see I don't have much fabric left at the bottom and it started to unravel which I know happened but I had I cut it too small 
and so I'm going to be pushing it. So I put this blanket stitch around the outside um, that way. Hopefully it'll keep from raveling anymore because I need all the fabric that's here. And I am bad. I do not always unhoop my projects, but the hoop isn't laying over any stitches. So I'm not too worried about it. And because when I wash this afterwards, a lot of those, um, those hoop marks will come out and then I iron it. Um, real quick, this is not one of my projects, but if you hear some noise in the background, this is my puppy Lucius. So he is uh, my stitching buddy and he is really trying to figure out what I'm doing on the floor. But this is him and he's a long haired Dotson. So this is Lucius. So if you hear him, I apologize. Um, one last thing. So before I changed my cross stitch storage and the way I use it over to the new method that I showed in the last video, this is how I, how I kept track of it. Um, and it is a disorganized mess. So here, this project bag I got from Etsy, I'll link this as well. But I just had all the flosses I used down there in the bottom of the bag. And as I needed a color, I would pull a length off and cut it. And then whatever was left, I put on this other hoop that had some batting, has batting, like just quilt batting on it. Um, and that is not a system that I liked because not home a whole, whole lot. So when I'm traveling and I have to have my project bag, my hoop that has my work on it, then this, and then the pattern. It's just, that's a, that's a lot for me to have to tote around um, when I'm not home. So I'm really thankful that I did switch over. So for my next one, I have two projects in the same bag. Again, um, our house is pretty small, so I need to make try to save room whenever I can. This project bag came from the same people where I got the last one. It's linked in the description. And I have two projects in here, so I will show those both to you now. And one of them I've already started. The other is just kitted up and ready to go. So my first one, I am using a Q-snap for it. I'm pretty sure this is an eight inch square Q-snap. Um, it's off brand, it's, it, it came like, it's a store brand Q-snap, it's not the real one, um, but it works. And so I'm working on this little bookmark right here. So I found this bookmark on clearance at Joann's and it, I think it was $2. So I was, I jumped all over it and I was like, sure. I'll make a bookmark because that seemed like something small that I could get done quickly. Um, I don't have this pattern printed out. I've been using it off of my computer. So I'll go ahead and pop a picture of that up here now. So I haven't spent much time on this, probably a grand total of maybe 20 to 30 minutes. I have not worked much on this at all but I'm hoping to change that and get this done soon. I love small projects that I can get done quickly because the, the larger ones take so much longer. Sometimes you can get a little discouraged if you're not having many finishes. So I'm excited to get this done. And chickens, I love chickens. As you can see, I have it in a chicken bag as well. I thought it could be a fun bookmark uh, to use maybe in my Bible or whatever book I'm reading right now. So I'm excited about that. All right, next project. So that's all for my current work. This next one is about to be a current project, but I just haven't had time to get it started yet. So I have it kitted up and ready to go. This is everything I'm gonna need for it. I will pop a picture up right here. So this pattern also came from Etsy. I'm stitching it on 14 count Ada that came from Hobby Lobby in the color oatmeal. I don't stray too far from 14 count Ada. Um, I'm not that adventurous yet with using hand dyed or linens or anything like that. So this works perfect for what I need. And this pattern or these patterns actually came in a bundle and I can get two patterns onto this one using this one um, piece of cloth. So that is really helpful. Here is all of the floss that I will use for it. And it is, you can see my new system at work here. If you watched my last video, some of these may look familiar. I was actually kidding this up in my last video. So here are all the colors that I'll need for the first pattern of that bundle. And you can see I have the floss drops at the top and then these pretty braided flosses. And I just love the way this looks. Excuse Lucius's tail that's popping up right there. Um, so yeah, this is what I'm using. 
and uh, I'm really excited for this. I think it'll be fun. I might hang it in my classroom when I'm done. So yeah, that is what I'm using so far. So far, loving this new system of the way I have my floss done. I just can't wait to get everything else, everything else um, braided and put onto the floss drops. So that is all I'm working on right now. Like I said, a really short whip parade today. Um, I think having, for me personally, having too many projects going is really overwhelming. So I try to keep it to a minimum. That way I don't get overwhelmed because if I'm overwhelmed, I just won't pick it up at all. And then they'll all just stay works in progress and never be finished. So hopefully the next time I see y'all, I will be able to show you a finished product. So thank you so much again, guys. I have been so blessed by your comments by your likes um, and all of your kind words. So I really appreciate it and I hope you have a blessed day.